Good morning, Central Publishing authors. I hope you're enjoying your Labor Day, but I did want to step in and give you some tips that are going to help you for this week. For this little video, I'm going to talk about internal and external conflict. So you've got your, you've got your main characters going. You're, maybe you're still thinking through your protagonist a little bit. But I want you to start developing your internal and external conflicts with your character. What does your character want? Every great story has this internal just pull and want for your main character. What, what is that thing that your main character is striving for? And on kind of a, a, kind of a negative term, what is your character afraid of? What is his deepest fear? Another question you need to ask is, what is your character's weakness? What is his greatest weakness? Or what is its greatest strength? So when you're going for that want, what you're going to do is you're going to look at, okay, you're going to establish, this is what my character wants. This is, this is where he wants to go. And you're going to look at what barriers will be between here and there. And so that's what, those are the conflicts that you're going to, to insert throughout the novel. Those barriers that, t that stand between what your character wants in the end and uh, the things he's going to have to overcome to get to that want. So uh, another thing you're going to do that same sort of thing with the antagonist. What does your antagonist want? Uh, what is the antagonist? What is his or her beef against your protagonist? What's that? What is that conflict there? And start thinking through. Okay, when these two opposing forces meet. What, what will that clash look like? So you don't have to discover all those things immediately, but you certainly, at this point, need to know what your main character's internal drive. So you're going to have some internal conflicts going on if you're doing first person or kind of doing an omniscient third person view. Uh, that's why the point of view is very important for you to establish early on. That's an early decision is that point of view. But if, you're, it, if you do like first person or some sort of omniscient, Point of view, you'll be able to know the inner workings of that inner conflict. But do know, like first person also has some uh, dis well, some limitations, not disadvantages, but limitations. You that first person could be making some false presumptions, could be making some, um, which actually makes for great storytelling. So if you if you take your character and he's he's assuming one thing, and you he, you get all this internal information, conflict going on with, and then there's a, it's a false assumption, then that's a nice twist in that novel, and that's, that's really exciting for the reader, too. So that's an advantage of that sort of limited point of view. So if you've got those internal conflicts going on and external, what are some things that can happen with the environment? So if it's a high school student, maybe there's some, some kind of struggle in the family, maybe there's some kind of, you know, he, he can't drive yet. Maybe she is, uh, you know, sometimes these stories, they include bullies that have, have these external, well, actually, certainly that would create internal and ex external conflicts. So, and as, as, you're, as, as far as pacing goes, when we get into the editing stage, you'll be more considerate of, of how is this moving along? Does it feel good? One one tool that you can use is as you're as you're writing if it ever feels a little stale or begins to get a little dull one way to do, one way to handle that is throw some kind of conflict like like you're throwing darts uh, so as an author sometimes authors really get a kick out of uh, how can I uh, torture sort of torture this this character especially if you have a dark book which I personally I'm a fan of of happy endings so you're going to be able to make have liberty to make your own choices in those. As long as it's classroom appropriate, it can fit in this project. Uh, but I do like a, a good happy ending, honestly. Uh, but you know, you you make those choices. But so you're going to create all these internal and external conflicts with your characters. One thing on the good versus evil. Okay, I I feel some of the best writing. I think some of the best writing includes characters where the, the bad guy, for example, is not purely evil. There's something sympathetic about that character. There's something that, that you know, that kind of gives a backstory of why 
this this bad guy is so uh, driven by his evil deeds or something that led to his evil actions. So uh, bad guys, I feel like the best ones aren't purely 100% evil. There's some redeeming qualities. So think about your favorite, reflect on your favorite novel. What was it about that bad guy that you just, ooh, you know, you just, <laughs> they just, ugh. but think, did the author introduce any sort of sympathetic sort of uh, backstory to to your, your bad guy? On your good guys also, I think purely uh, perfect characters, purely good characters are also a little false. You know, we all, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses and things that, you know, we'd like to overcome, but, but we don't. So, so do introduce what not just the strengths, but what are some of the weaknesses of your your good guy or good girl? Uh, so think of on this same exercise. Think of your favorite book, and I want you to think about your favorite book for those characters. <laughs> My camera shook. Uh, for those characters and why you love that main character, and and how did it? How did that author express uh, admirable, admirable? <laughs> Qualities and how did the author express qualities that uh, displayed the weakness of that character? So, you know, we all we all have our our flaws, and I think that makes a, a more authentic authentic character. Just as a bonus, also consider the genre and your favorite book in general, and do some do some kind of soul searching. Why does this book resonate with me so deeply? And so maybe in your novel you can you can bring some of those elements. So why why you know your favorite book just really tugs on something internally, and see if you can discover what that is, and maybe you can incorporate that in your writing this year as you do your novel. So I hope you have a great week of writing. Remember, you're working on two to three pages every week and you're building your habits, building this into your habits, and I look forward to seeing the wonderful things you have to come. Happy writing!